Awesome. Um, well, thanks again for having me. I'm excited to talk. Um, been sitting around the last couple of weeks, and uh, this forced me to get off my butt. Um, it was nice to have piggybacked Tony. Uh, we've got a prior relationship, um, and I am definitely a fan of his. Uh, enjoy his presentations whenever I do get the chance to hear them. Um, and I'm often, you know, kind of have the chance to sit back and uh, take in his wisdom and, and reminded me today of a great quote. And I think um, what's awesome about Tony and what he does and the information he disseminates is um, he does a good job of taking something that's pretty complex or complicated and he makes it really simple. And uh, it reminded me of a Matthew Kelly quote I posted a couple months back. Complex problems demand simple solutions. And it is simplicity that allows widespread adoption and participation. Um, and I could tell you probably for the most part about, I, I'd bet 80, 90% of what Tony does from listening to him speak. Um, and that means he's, he's awesome at uh, reducing the complexity and making it simple for guys like me and, and guys like uh, you guys, the listeners. So um, his presentation and, and uh, kind of the theme to what he does also reminded me of a Ralph Mann quote, a, a famous sprint researcher, and he talks about um, in order to finish the race first, we first have to make sure we show up to the start line first, so something to chew on. Um, I also wanted to piggyback, knowing that I'd be behind Tony with, with this awesome quote from Pressfield. Um, you guys can read it, uh, but again, exhaustion is obviously usually the enemy um, in twofold, not just because of the uh, physiological detriment, but also because of the mental detriment from a skill acquisition standpoint. So um, my presentation themed on uh, programming. And um, again, I know for all those in the audience, what we do share, the reason we're here on a Thursday night about seven o'clock is our curiosity. I was taken aback uh, by this quote from Michael Jackson and Kobe Bryant. It was in ESPN, the magazine a couple of years back. Um, so the, the one thing we do share is uh, curiosity and, again, a quest for excellence. <clears throat> Quick thank you. Um, the people in the picture are near and dear to me. They're people I've learned from. Um, I've had the unique opportunity to learn from awesome men and state championship coaches to watch uh, who I thought at one point, or maybe still is one of the greatest athletes in the world. Um, and I've had the opportunity to train kids as young as 10 or 11, um, some pros and, and adults in their 70s. So. Um, I'm currently, uh, as of the last couple of days, reading Daniel Kahneman's Thinking Fast and Slow. Um, and a quote that jumped out and hit me was um, this one here, a puzzling limitation of our mind, our excessive confidence in what we believe we know, and our apparent inability to acknowledge the full extent of our ignorance and the uncertainty of the world we live in. We often overestimate how much we understand. Um, time off like this has allowed me to kind of rest, recover, and, and rethink what I do. Um, and it's, again, open minds up to how much there really is out there. Um, and we should always be questioning our methods and our methodology. So the objectives today as we move on, we'll talk core tenants, we'll talk some problems, we'll, we'll try to take a case study of football and reverse engineer it. We'll go through movement one-on-one -on -one as I see it, then I'll get you guys through some sample sessions, week in a yearly progression. Um, I'll do the best I can to stay on pace here. So. Strength conditioning coaches, um, performance coaches, if you will, we are nothing more than purveyors of culture and performance. It's what we do. I want to simplify it there. We teach athletes. Uh, we hopefully at certain points are in the shape to show them how to do certain exercise or drills. Um, but the biggest piece of that, that quote I, I just put up was, was the go part. Um, it's my job. It's our job to get out of the way. Um, I'm not a parent yet, but I always like you know, like in a coach to a parent in that we want to do the best we can to teach, um, but the faster we can get out of the way, uh, the more mature the athlete will be and the better um, skills and information will stick um, when they're displaying on their own. So to simplify strength and conditioning, um, number one, culture and mindset. It's our job to foster awareness. Um, again, if you look at the skill of learning, the most of the people we come across are unconsciously incompetent. Um, and the goal is to eventually get them uh, co consciously incompetent, sorry, unconsciously competent, excuse me. So um, consistency, communication, 
Uh, community values, super important. Sometimes we'll always overlook those aspects and it becomes just about the X's and the O's. So um, number one, my job in here in the weight room uh, is to reduce the likelihood of injury. I wanna then prepare the athletes for the rigors of practice and play. And finally, um, it's performance enhancement. <clears throat> um, again, from a sporting context, it's my job to help athletes get more out of what they're already doing. I think earlier in my career, in my 10th year, I spent too much time thinking about that last point, performance enhancement. Um, and again, at, at certain points that can be a means to an end and the end is gonna be injury. So um, I've learned my lessons along the way. Core tenants. Um, again, it's my job to create a mindful feeling state. So anytime I can uh, let a drill, or let, let the drill, I, I should say, do the talking, I wanna do such, such things as that. Um, again, I think throughout a coach's uh, lifeline and, and a sign of maturity is knowing when to say something and when not to say something, knowing what, knowing how. Um, but oftentimes the less I'm speaking, usually that's indicative of the, the better the outcomes um, that I'm actually seeing out here. So competency before capacity. Everything we do is about quality. <clears throat> Again, we wanna break things down. We wanna isolate to integrate. Um, and that's gonna kind of segue to the part whole method. Um, and things want to be simple to complex. Variability is a, is a hot new trend and term in uh, skill acquisition. Um, we have to do so judiciously. Um, again, if it doesn't look right, we should probably wait and we should probably be patient in terms of exercise selection or adding nuances. Whenever I'm teaching in the weight room, I can break things down from a weight room or a movement standpoint into the three Ps. Posture and position, pattern, power. Um, and from a technical progression, again, breaking down almost any exercise or movement we see, whether it be in the sporting context on the field, it comes down to putting the athlete in the right position, addressing the proper range of motion, whether it be big, small, or in between, working on tempo. I think tempo, you could think of that as speed. You could also think of that as, as rhythm or coordination and timing, maybe sequencing as well. And then load. Um, load will come in the shape of volume, intensity, so that could be more weight on a bar, or that could be faster speeds uh, or faster outcomes out in the turf or the practice field. Um, we need to monitor uh, within reason. I think the biggest thing we wanna look for is patterns. Um, I certainly don't, don't chart every single rep, um, but almost every single workout I'm timing kids, whether it be a 10, 20, and obviously we're monitoring things in the weight room. Um, we're looking for trends more than anything. I liked one of the uh, slides Tony had, you're looking for trending lines. We don't wanna get um, off put too much when we see certain dips here and there. But again, um, system trends is what we're all after. And finally, again, community and connection. I read a study, I'm a paraphrase it a couple years back, um, and I couldn't cite the exact study, but it talked about uh, males specifically in strength and conditioning, they were more likely to stay with some type of program if they had a buddy or a friend joining them. So problems with high school football s and um, I've been a part of it in the past, both as a coach and then obviously um, as a four-year athlete at Waukesha West. And I think it first and foremost comes down to education. Uh, we don't know what we don't know. Um, my pastor, Max Ramsey, always says, if we knew better, we do better. And oftentimes we don't. Um, so we're always reliant on each other to provide great information. Um, and then again, it, it comes down to us keeping an open mind. Um, open mind, you know, a bias is a closed mind, you know, more of a fixed mindset. Um, I found that growth-minded coaches often are able to look outside of their passions and roots. They're often able to explore different fields. Um, case study for me, for instance, I'll never forget being at a Perform Better clinic in the Chicago area, and I had the chance to listen to a gentleman named Todd Wright coach, um, and he was talking about kind of 3D movements, moving in multiple planes, he was talking about a basketball player at the time um, and just watching him move, watching his demo, taking part in it, um, you know, for, for whatever unique reason, it reminded me a lot of an MMA athlete. So um, again, I urge you guys to look at different sports. I remember reading years back about uh, the Miami Heat coach, Eric, I forget his last name, um, but he studied with uh, Chip Kelly at one point. Again, to uh, cross pollinate is gonna be super important um, to better develop your field and to have more of a liberal arts approach to things. Um, finally, I think one of the biggest issues with, with strength and conditioning in most programs at large is our resources. Um, I'm super lucky in that I am, uh, I've got a beautiful facility, um, but as I tell a lot of my friends or prospective salesmen, um, I am pretty much, I would say, 
house rich and cash poor. Um, was lucky enough to have a 1080 motion or a 1080 uh, resistance training machine brought out here in the summer. And uh, what an awesome piece of equipment. I just couldn't afford it. So um, for people that have that situation, um, best you can do is a plan B to it. So um, again, other issues you might see athlete to uh, coach ratio, facility space, equipment, time, weather. Um, but again, the biggest thing is to take the best program you can and fit it to what you have. So reverse engineering the game. Um, Matt Rhea was actually cited on this paper in this study. Um, if you've watched his uh, career take off in the last couple of years, he went from, I believe, the IMG Academy to Indiana, and now he's one of the head leads at Alabama. Um, but in a nutshell, Tony did a great job talking about that five minute rule. Each play is gonna last anywhere between two to six seconds. You're gonna see a work rest ratio, one to five, one to six. And then throughout the game, you might see 70, 90 plays in a high school game. Whether you're running a platoon or not, um, each player might play anywhere between 20 to 70, 90 plays. So um, that again, kind of entails and describes a need to develop a lactic capacity. Um, we don't necessarily have to do that, as Tony said, through aerobic means or running pointless uh, gassers. Um, but the biggest thing is to develop over time. Uh, when it comes to capacity, I think one of the best quotes I heard was from one of my mentors, a guy named Dan Papp, and he uh, just likened to it um, to a basketball player. Um, if you want to get in fourth quarter shape, you have to start with quarter one and seemingly you have to progress and build up from there. Um, with, you know, uh, fatigue management and, and load accumulation, we also have to look at practice weeks. Um, a great resource might be Tony, Tony himself. I remember being in the TSC audience with uh, Jimmy Radcliffe, and he did an amazing job of structuring his training week. But again, um, if you focus on quality and you're effective and fast in your practice time, uh, usually from a fatigue management standpoint, um, again, with the use of certain things like catapult as well, that can kind of help us fine tune ourselves from a conditioning and a load standpoint. Um, movement encompassed. And uh, I think if there's, there's nothing you remember, think about this slide right here um, as a big takeaway. And I kind of call it playing in the phone booth. Um, so if you can imagine an athlete in a phone booth, and I'll give you a little bit more space, but there's few things the human body needs to do that are going to be relevant across sport. Uh, bend the knees or extend the hips to absorb force, produce force. We need to be able to rotate and disassociate the knees and the hips, the knees from each other, the hips from the torso, the change direction, um, to pivot, to move. We need to be able to stabilize and resist rotation. Um, so that would predicate core and balance. We need to be able to push, press, pull, throw. Um, and that from a football standpoint would be more so for um, your blocking type players, or your throwing type players. So uh, your front men. Um, and then finally, we need to hold the conversation. So I would call that resisting fatigue um, or injury and repeatability. <clears throat> Again, um, from a warm-up standpoint, from a strength standpoint, obviously we need more space to sprint, um, but we have to think about what we have, right? And the human body is a multi-planar tool. Um, important qualities to train. These are pieces you will see me uh, work with from an athletes, athletic development standpoint with, with my athletes and our case subjects out here at Next Level year-round. Um, we train speed from day one, and we progress out there. I guess you could call my programming or philosophy more of a short to long type approach. Um, but all these qualities you see here are super important to our program. And again, equipment. Um, it starts with the athlete's body. Um, one of the things we say at Next Level is your body weight is the most accessible tool or the most accessible piece of fitness equipment. Um, and then from there, again, use what you have. With some of these at-home programs with our kids, um, I've just told them to grab an implement. And again, um, we'll get into different ways to progress or be judicious with your loading in a little bit here. Um, but programming is pretty simple. Desired outcomes plus problems, we have to think about those two things, will help us come up with a solution-based plan. Um, but first, we need to take an account for limiting factors. Um, I dummied this down and thought about it from a uh, vehicle or car standpoint. <clears throat> You're not going to change too much the vehicle body. Um, we need nutrition, but also have to account for mom and dad. Um, so anthropometrics and structure, um, but think joints. Transmission um, and the electrical system, you could liken to mobility, stability, or tissue quality. Um, and then if we go down the line, the engine, think of that as your strength, power, elasticity, acceleration, max velocity. So hitting those qualities every day. Um, and again, 
exhaust and fuel work capacity, we can improve that just throughout time throughout the year and with nutrition as well. Programming, we wanna keep things super simple, uh, but it just comes down to why are, why are you choosing what you're choosing? Um, is there gonna be a transfer? How much are you doing it, right? So volume, intensity, load, how often? Tony referenced three times a week. Um, we can sprint with certain athletes, I'd say two to four times. Um, strength work, you know, you can train submaximally or maximally from a submaximal standpoint once every five to 15 days. You don't have to train strength every single week from a maximal output standpoint. Um, but then we also have to account for recovery. <clears throat> Um, with variation, uh, we want to obviously varietize what we're doing from an exercise standpoint. We also have to think about themes and cues. When we talk specifically about periodization, um, number one, it's process oriented. Um, again, four characteristics. I think I pulled this from a, a sports science researcher, Chris Beardsley. Pre-planned, non-random, variety-based, specific, and timetable. Um, for you guys back home, Overload and specificity, the most important. Uh, believe it or not, I think at one point we had somebody in Next Level's history get, get stronger with a five by five approach and he kept adapting um, throughout the entirety of his summer. He was, I wanna say, a late high school or college age, aged athlete. Another adage, if it's important to train it every day. Um, again, simple motto, move well, move fast, move often in every plane while appropriately controlling fatigue. Um, again, fatigue, that isn't necessarily the enemy at all times because we may find ourselves in fatigue standpoints, but we want to be able to buffer that correctly and welcome it into our training program appropriately and judiciously. Uh, from my standpoint, uh, strength and power backs up what I want to see from a field turf or a track standpoint, right? Um, it's hopefully going to help affect or affects the sporting task um, and strength is also a tool to help from a safety outcome. Quick 30,000 foot flyover of, of our sessions. Uh, our warm up takes anywhere between 15 to 30 minutes, um, but it's purposeful and it's intentful. And we have stability and core in uh, mobility and dynamic movement or addressing movement patterns. Um, we go through another segment where we're gonna acquire, you know, from a learning standpoint, new skills. And we're gonna work on power development, stiffness. We'll take some time for the expression of those skills throughout uh, a full speed movement. And then we'll piggyback that with supportive strength. Again, the strength and the plyos, those things are supportive to speed and movement. If we're not getting faster or improving on those metrics, then we are doing our athletes a disservice. Again, session breakdown, pretty easy. I wanna kind of move that speed and movement seg segment Again, theme-based might switch from a priority standpoint throughout the year. We have uh, some type of linear movement throughout the majority of the year. And I would urge you guys from a agility or decel or change direction standpoint to train that from day one. Um, with that segment alone, again, we treat every decel or agility session as an acceleration segment as well. Um, every day you're always accelerating or incorporating some type of linear speed practice. In a nutshell, this is what we do. Um, you can break things down to full body, push, pull, press or hamstring. Um, typically, if I'm working with a high school program and have you know free reign over the week or a high school, college, NFL, we're gonna follow more of an upper lower split, which you'll see right there. <clears throat> Again, throughout the year, um, I do utilize obviously the, the methodology of other coaches. So Cal Dietz has obviously become prominent name um, with his triphasic model. Definitely have stolen some things, but again, take the principles and fit it to your methodology and your program and philosophy. So ISO work, eccentric work, um, I'd categorize my philosophy and programming as, as more of a complex or maybe use Charlie Francis's vertical integration model. But again, we're going to train every single quality, no matter what it is for the majority of the year, it might change from a density and dose standpoint. Simple strength session. Again, um, it's common sense for me. Um, but again, we can get kids a lot stronger and have their strength support injury reduction and their speed and resilience on the field. Uh, again, maybe fine tune this from a volume standpoint to work on hypertrophy. Um, again, we know that force equals mass times acceleration. Again, football is an acceleration based sport, but it's also a momentum based sport. So adding judicious mass um, is important as long as we're not getting slower as we do so.
typical example of early off season, but more importantly, probably year round, we might accelerate um, or do some type of linear speed development on Monday. We might pair that with an upper or lower split. Wednesdays might be changed direction. I'm a little bit judicious with uh, max velocity work. I use acceleration to bleed into that. Um, so maybe Friday might be a great day for some tempo work. Uh, again, extensive or intensive tempo kind of towards that 75 to 85% range for me with appropriate dose. It's an easy way for an athlete to build some volume, but also feel upright position and work on rhythm and flow, as I would call it. Pushing the envelope here. So I appreciate the opportunity to speak to you guys. Feel free to hit me up on one of these avenues. Um, again, biggest thing I want to do with, with this presentation, provide you some, some uh, nuts and bolts of what I do, but, but get you to think about what you're doing already. Um, help you guys hopefully come up with your own plan and rinse your eyes a little bit. So again, thanks for your time.